welcome in to today's podcast right here at the Cog Hill 40. Peaches wouldn't let Nugget into the canned ham for this episode, so here's Jason and Brooke. Johnny Carson didn't have nothing on these folks. What is up, everybody? This is another episode of the Cogcast Podcast. I've even quit saying what episodes they are. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Yeah. When people go to look for them, they're not going to know. It says it on the title and stuff and the thumbnail. Oh, so, so you will look it up. You just don't Yeah, know. I'll just go look at the last one. Okay. Yep. So number question mark. Yeah, yep, number <laughs> question mark. We are coming at you from the canned ham, the a.k.a. Cock, Cock Hill Studio at the Cock Hill 40. That was hope a mouthful. It was a mouthful. I hope everybody had a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving. Yes. We did. We we did. We have leftovers still. Still have leftovers and didn't cook that much, really. No. You just told me you haven't eaten anything this morning, and I was thinking to myself, well, that's a good thing because we've got some leftovers. Still got leftovers. Yeah, I ate it for lunch and supper last night. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to, well, I offered to fix you a nice turkey sandwich, and you said, I think I'll just have all everything. the fixings. I do. I want all the fixings. And, um... Yeah, I just, um, it was good. It was really good. We just did a turkey breast, and you did a sweet potato casserole and mac and cheese, and that was it. Yep, and which was plenty. It was plenty. Here we are, day three, and still eating on it. And, it and cranberry sauce. And Mary Cross can cranberry sauce, which come to find out from the comments, most everybody's like Mary Carl. They love it. They love the canned cranberry sauce. You know, as I was, well, she asked for a new can yesterday uh-huh. at lunch. <laughs> I did buy enough, so uh-huh. thankful for that. So I opened up a new can, and I'm, I did a little taste. Yeah. And I, it just, oh, I just am not a fan. I like it when I have dressing to mix it in. Yeah. I don't like it just plain by itself. I like that tartness and the saltiness of the dressing mixed together. Yeah. That's what I like. I just, it's just, I like the, um, the, it's called a congealed salad. Yes. And that's what I think about cranberry sauce. I don't know what's in that. It must have some cranberries in it because I'm just thinking back salad. on the. You like the congealed salad? I do, but I don't like cranberry sauce. I like the, what's it called? Wardorf. How you say it? Waldorf. Waldorf salad. You said that completely backwards. I did because I am backwards. Mm. Um, and that's and that's just pure sugar. Yeah. <laughs> that's like pistachio jelly uh pudding. Yeah. And marshmallows. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much and pineapple and pineapple in it. Yeah. But I mean, you know, yeah. you're getting a little bit of goody out of it. I guess so. Um I'm Hadn't gonna make me while. make I'm gonna ask my mom to uh-huh. make me one of those congealed salads once we get moved into our house because now I'm craving it. Are you really? Yeah, that's I love it. That's not something you can just pick up at the store either, no, I don't think. Yeah. I, don't, I think it's something special that your mama has to make. I think you're right. <laughs> I don't even know how. I've never made it. I, I just right. know that she she would ask me, you know, you want your your congealed salad, don't yeah. you? Well, yes, I do. It was pink. <laughs> it was always pink. It was always pink. But I don't think it has to be pink. I just think it depends on what type of fruit you use yeah. or berries or whatever. Yeah, I and I I'm liked right it with that. nuts in it. Yep. I'll have to ask her. I have to ask her to make that for you. I wonder if Mary Carl would like, though. She will not try not anything new. Not the salad, but the Wardorf. Waldorf. Waldorf. <laughs> that sounds Stop. like a Harry <laughs> Potter. No, she won't, she, won't, she won't try anything. Oh, yeah. She tells me ahead of time that she's not going to eat a casserole. And I'm like, what? You ain't eating it yet. Just because it has the name casserole, you're not going to eat it? No, Mama, because it has all those ingredients all stirred together, and I don't like that. And she liked the sweet potato casserole. She did. I I told her, I said, look, I've got these sweet potatoes, and I was going to just, you know, just cook them as sweet potatoes. I said, but would you like to try sweet potato casserole? Mm -hmm. When she said yes, I said, yee-haw. Because that's what I did. I made a casserole. And she liked it. And she liked it. So maybe we're on the on the mend with our casserole. And she loves sweet potatoes. And so I, the whole sweet potato casserole, I guess because I say casserole. Yeah, end, that's what it is. It's all. anything yeah. that has that word, casserole. Yeah. She thinks conglomeration. Yeah. And <laughs> she doesn't like it all combined. But she did like that. When I don't we know how were, you couldn't because it's delicious. When we were eating lunch, which we ate at the picnic table outside. Mm-hmm. 
um, of course, my mom came over and joined us, and Mama would take her macaroni and cheese and her sweet potato casserole and kind of get it in one bite. And yeah. Mary Carl was over there going, "Oh my yeah. gracious, I don't know." She how don't you like do that. her food to mix. No, it's it, <laughs> and it, and you know if it touches, it's it's yeah, just it's it. It's not over. Yeah, it's no she good. does not like the food to mix. At I don't all. remember ever being like. I that. don't either. I don't either. We had one friend. That's the first person I ever knew. He didn't want anything to touch. He, and he was a grown man. Yeah. <laughs> well, so. he was semi-grown at the time. That's the only person I ever knew that, that did not, and his food was so separated out. And I mean, never it was touched. not going to touch. Yeah. So. I knew exactly who So Mary Carl is very similar. Yeah. Um, probably not as much space required as Scott, mm-hmm. but he meant he wasn't going to eat it if yeah. it touched. We're going to touch. So. Uh yeah, I hope everybody had an awesome Thanksgiving. Uh, I, from the comments and messages we got, it seems like everybody had a great Thanksgiving. I wanted to make one little announcement. Um, you haven't been getting any newsletters, weekly newsletters or updates, and the website has just kind of been stagnant. We have actually, I've been doing that all by myself. I've been trying to run the website. I built the website uh, is it in the emails and I just I can't do it anymore. I just I just can't, and it just got you know falling behind. So we have actually hired somebody mm-hmm. to redo our website. I told them what I wanted because I couldn't I couldn't get the things I wanted, like a recipe section. I could never get a recipe section, and I ended up getting one in there. But it's not like a true rep. I want one that's got the little card where people can print off recipes. You can't do that with ours. So it was just it's just several things that I wanted to do and the emails and all that. So I'm not quite for sure when all this is going to happen. It's in the works. It is in the works. So bear with us on that. But I think once it does happen, you guys are going to love the website. Um, I got a lot of ideas with it. It's going to be simple, but it's going to be real personable and yeah, I think your guys are going to Easy love it. to navigate, I hope. Easy. It's going to be an extension to us. You're going to be able to see uh, just more about us that's aside from YouTube and Facebook and Instagram. So y'all stay tuned for that. I think it's going to be great. I think so, too. I don't know much about... I mean, I know when I go to a website, I know what I'm looking for, and I yeah. know if it's, you know, good or not, so right. to speak. And I think that this one you'll look at and you'll say, hey, they got a good website. Yeah, and it's going to be like all-inclusive. You go to our website, you should be able to find everything you need to know about well, us you know, and Navigate, even our shirts and just just everything is, um, yeah. I was reading some of the comments from our last um, podcast, and we talked about making turkey hash. And there were several comments that said, what is turkey hash? I've never heard of it. And so I went in our website, which is under construction. I found our recipe section, which is not as good as we would like for it to be. And I copied that turkey hash recipe and I pasted it to a couple of comments. But just the ease of being able to tell somebody it's on our website and put the website address in there versus copying and pasting because you know it's too hard for somebody to navigate at this point right it would just be a lot easier it's gonna be a lot easier and i'm not a web designer and when we were smaller and i didn't have all these great ideas running through my head i could manage it but now like wanting to do the recipe section we want to do like animal profile section we want to do uh, it's just well you know so i can't i can't can't just simply prayer flags where do y'all get those prayer flags that's a question that we get asked well when we were at the old farm especially on a weekly basis. Right. And it would be so easy to say in a video, everything that we've mentioned can be found on our website. Just go to our website, yeah. But don't do it yet. Don't do it yet. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's We're just, not even going to tell you anything about yeah. it, just that it's under construction. But I just want everybody to know that we are going to start doing newsletters and emails again, and I'm gonna, we're going to have an awesome website. All right. So we did a little cleaning up around here yesterday. We did a... We've, been cleaning up a little bit here and there, but yesterday, and generally when we first got here, we did some cleaning up together. But here recently, we've kind of gone separate ways, and I've been doing, especially this water line. I mean, mm-hmm. this water line has been An every grabber. single day. 
that I've been working on it. And I've had some people say, why did it take so long? Well, I'm not a plumber. It was, I ended up telling you it was close to 1,100 foot of water pipe that, you know, I did basically, I mean, you did help me some, but the majority of it I did by myself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it just takes time, not including, I'm still making, we're doing five videos a week now, counting a podcast. Right. Um, those take me several, 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 several hours to put together. And there were still things publish. we wanted to do as a family, and you would still stop. Still got and family do that. time, still have animal chores, still have animals we have to tend to. So it's not like that I was spending eight hours a day every day on this water line. And that's maybe, what I told so, you I yeah. thought would make it easier if you did break from it yes. periodically versus trying to get it all done and. Two straight days, 16 hours on the water line. Right. So, I mean, even though it took you a long time, it wasn't like you were sitting there just, you know, Doing focused on yeah. one thing. That's right. So that's why it took me so long on the water line. But yesterday, we had a, we've, had, we've had two huge piles. we got three huge piles of um, just cleared out stuff. Two of them we kind of did. And then we got one that Greg did. But um, you burned one. I did. Yesterday. Day before yesterday. Yeah, day for yesterday you burned one. Well, yesterday we were down there and decided to burn it. And this time I helped. And we got a lot done. We did. Um, it was kind of over where the tiny house is. And a lot of it was little limbs and things that had to be cut down before the tiny house arrived. So the, the wood was good and dry. We had a water hose that we could bring over right. to make sure the fire didn't get away from us. And we just all contributed and, and got a good majority of that pile burned away. And the majority of this stuff is invasive plants. Mm -hmm. There were China berry trees is one. Mm -hmm. there, there, or they were all in this area. And the other one is privet. Mm -hmm. And privet is, I think it's Chinese privet. Am I right on that? Am I, I think wrong? so. Any, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but it's we just call it privet, mm -hmm. and it looks like boxwood. It does, but it's extremely invasive, and it will just literally take over and just smother out any native plant, anything, and it just it's it relentless. It looks terrible around the base of trees because it looks like just overgrowth. It is, and that's what it is. It's overgrowth, and it'll just take over your entire property if you let it. But it looks like a giant boxwood, and it just gets huge, and it's extremely fast growing. And we cleaned out a bunch of that privet yesterday, and I had a lot of people asking me, "What is privet?" Because it must be uh, 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 zones eight. I know it grows well here, but maybe in the cooler, cooler climates, it doesn't do very well, and that's why maybe some northerners don't see it like we do. Hmm. But it is. It Never is. Never thought about that. It is everywhere here it really is especially going down the road you can see a lot of it on sides of the road oh yeah you can yeah um but <laughs> you were you were taking a lot of had taken a lot of it out with the chainsaw yeah and then there were areas where i could get the tractor bucket up under it and if you could get it up by the root that was the best best way to go because you don't have to, to worry about it coming back it's going to come back it's going to come back yeah. so you took time picking up what i pulled up with the bucket of the tractor mm -hmm. and then, you know, put it on our pile and we just cleaned up. I mean, it looks it just, really, really nice. We'll have to add that in the video. It's not, up and let it's people not see it. nearly done. We're not complete, but oh, one no. section yeah. at a time. It looks, and this is the area where you know, y'all know we hired that mulcher to come in and clean a lot of this undergrowth and priv it up. And this was the area he couldn't get because of random blocks. Mm-hmm. And just just random stuff like you found a huge roll of wire. Mm -hmm. We found a wheel. Yeah, a rim off a of rim, a vehicle. Metal rim. Um, the block is very random. Um, we'll just find piles of it. Uh, there was a pile just, of sand. A pile of sand that was just crazy. That made me think maybe that they were going to build concrete. concrete. Maybe so. Because that maybe was concrete was reinforcement wire. That That's I right. Found. You know what? You sure are right about that. It was a roll mm -hmm. of concrete reinforcement wire. There's a pile of gravel over there. A pile of gravel. So um, I'm not sure what he had going on. I don't on, know what he had going on. And the, no one's lived here in a while. Yeah. But it, it's almost like it was a little, he was trying to make a little stream area. I don't, and, and there's no, we haven't found any running water. No. 
So I don't, I just don't know what was going on there. It All wasn't all kind of um, four inch corrugated pipe. Four, yeah, four inch corrugated pipe. The black there kind was, that's like for drains. Unless it was a drainage issue. Right now, we've haven't seen a single I issue of any type of drainage issue on this property whatsoever. None. We've had lots of rain, and there's no wash, no nothing in this area. And so I don't know why I had all this pipe block piled up. We've been getting it and piling up nice and neat by the um by the old barn. Yeah. And there were so many people that said, Y'all need to save those blocks, they'll come in handy with building. Well, that's true. They will, but we are not block masons. We're not block masons. <laughs> and in order to build something out of block, you have to have skill and you have to have a footer, which is dug down in the ground with yeah. concrete poured to support the blocks, whatever you build. And then you have to know how to <laughs> to put the mortar in between the blocks to make yes. them stick. I mean, it's an art. It and is an art. Those guys that put that mortar on their knife, and it just sits there. It's just amazing. I've watched them do it. I even watched videos because we want some uh, block brick columns at the entrance of our property. And you suggested that maybe I could figure out how to do it. And I watched about three videos, and after the third one, I told you, it's no way. No way I could do I that. I know it takes no a way. lot of skill. But we will save the block. We are going to save the block. But we won't be personally yeah. constructing anything. And it may come in handy at some point. We will have it. And those blocks that are over by the tiny house are like supersized blocks. And, they're and, like a block and a half. And then there's some, it's just crazy. They're all, they're all different sizes. And there's some that are cut like an L. Did you see those yesterday? Uh -uh. There were several of them that are L-shaped. I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know anything about block words. I'm sure will somebody will comment that those are for this or that's a corner block or I don't I don't know. But um yeah, it is crazy. All the block over there. But it is cleaned out, looks nice, and we're gonna continue to do that. Especially since, you know, we the water line's in. We still got to bear it. Yeah. And I'm gonna start on that today, hopefully, and get that done. And uh but that was huge. It took us half the time to do the chores. The oh feeding gosh. Water and chores this I'm morning. I'm telling y'all, I time, was so giddy when I was filling up those duck pools. Yes. It amazes me the difference in the amount of pressure that was coming from the water hoses that were stretched down the driveway mm -hmm. versus the spigots being right there. And that was a that was one question. I've had a lot of questions about the pipe, and we're gonna get into some questions here, and this will be a great time to answer some of them. But one was is why did I run such a big pipe? And that's why. That's the plumber. And Greg, the site guy who does a lot with the digging and burying pipe, and the contractor, all said the same thing. You need volume yep. to get your pressure. And so you, so what they told us to do is, is put a inch and a half or two inch, and Greg suggested two. Yeah, he said overkill was better than... Overkill, that. yeah, exactly. So we ran a two inch pipe from the main meter box at the road and come all the way down, and it tees off and goes to the pasture and goes all the way to the house now if you just left it all two inch it would come out but not have any pressure because it's such a big area so you reduce it down to three quarter inch and that squeezes that water and that gives you your pressure kind of like a pressure washer pressure washer works the same way if you, you're trying to put so much water in that little bitty tiny hole and that's what creates that high pressure stream for a pressure washer plus a you know the power of the motor and all that, but you you typically wouldn't pressure wash something that have a hole this big, you know. Unless it was a fire hose. Unless it was a fire <laughs> hose, yeah. But, but they're um, after a different. Yeah, that's aspect. a totally. That's still a lot of volume involved right. in that. Um, so you reduce it down, and that creates your pressure. And the reason why you want the volume is because you don't want to lose pressure. If you ran all three quarter inch, you would have pressure, but if you if you sat there long enough, it may drop off. Your pressure may drop off. Or if you opened up another valve or flushed the toilet or whatever, you could drop in pressure. And so the two inch gives you your volume. The three quarter inch gives you your pressure. Well, actually, I had bought all three quarter inch pecs on a roll. Yes. And it was 300 foot on a roll. And so I thought, well, that'll be great. We won't have to glue anything Correct. together. And so I the plumber came to plumb the tiny house mm -hmm. and I told him, I said, do you think that this will be a good idea for running water to the house? I bought three quarter inch pecs. It's on a 300 foot roll. And he said, I wouldn't use that. I wouldn't use and it. And I said, why? And he said, because you're going to need more volume. 
because it's such a long run. It's a, it's eleven hundred foot of pipe is what it ended up being. We ended up buying, and three quarter inch is not going to handle that much water. They, that it's length. Just, that length. They just won't handle it. So that's why. And I had a lot of people say that. Why didn't we buy rolled pipe? Or so there was another one that was somebody asked me. But anyways, it was all relative to the same thing. Picks. There's another one out there that's black. Uh-huh. That, why didn't we buy the biggest we could find was three quarter inch. Yeah, that's the biggest we that's could the, find. Or the, otherwise, we would have used picks, but three quarter inch was the biggest we could find in our area. Yeah, and and even the plumber said you're going to need to use two inch PVC. Two inch PVC. So I don't know if it's a regional thing. I, I don't know why, but that's what we. That's all we had was two inch PVC. So that's why we didn't use any type of rolled up. Um, I bought it, but I had it, to take it, it back. Work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Another question that I, that came up a lot about our plumbing and pipe was a lot of people didn't think it was deep enough, but I don't think a lot of people realize that here in Alabama that um, our our uh, frost and freeze lines only around five inches, so it doesn't have to be that deep at all. As a matter of fact, Dad, who's an electrical contractor, looked at our ditch and said, you know what, y'all really got it too deep. And I thought, that's crazy. He said, because if you have a leak, you're going to catch the devil trying to find it. It doesn't have to be that deep here. But no, we're not not worried about freezing pipes there. Uh, Our water line's way deeper than five inches. Um, So we're good with that aspect. Uh, Let's see here. Another one was about the pipe was shutoff valves, because I mentioned that I put shutoff valves randomly and uh, they won't know where I'm going to dig those up. No, I bought little boxes that are ground level, and it's got a top that you top, you know, pull off, and you'll be have access to the shutoff valve. Is that all of them right there? Oh, a back flush valve. I'm trying to get all of these out of the way. Oh, it was a back flush valve. Yes, there's a back flush valve on the system, and then I plan to put another one possibly near the house site when it gets done there. So, yeah, we're good on back flush valves. What did we use to dig our ditches? Brooke had a field day. <laughs> we rented a drivable trencher. We were told that if, it, if you were doing over 200 foot of trenching, that the walk behind would beat you to death. And, and take forever. And take forever. So mm-hmm. um, it was a little bit costlier to rent the drivable one, but they said you can get it all done in one day and it'll be a lot more useful than trying to trench, you know, 200 foot and then... It literally took you, I mean, it felt like 30 minutes it took you to trench everything. It's probably longer than that, but it was so fast. It was. It was um, It was fun, too. Um, I know you, you thoroughly enjoyed it. Once you got the hang of it, I could tell you liked it. I, I did. We did what Greg suggested, and that was go right along the fence line, mm-hmm. so that way we'll always know where our water line is. That's right. There won't be any question. We know exactly where it is. You know, it's like, what, two and a half foot from the from the fence, Yep. and we'll be able to find it. We'll and be able to find it in case, you know, and if we ever want to dig, we'll know where it's at, so we don't have, right. to, yeah, so, so, have to worry about that. And that's why we did, we did stay along that fence line mm-hmm. all the way down, so that would be our, you know, I remember there were some, some questions on at the other farm cog hill when every time we went to go do something we had to call the uh 811 call before you dig right. because we didn't want to hit a, a water line or electrical line and it wasn't that we didn't know where it was it just wasn't exactly the same all the way down so we right. want you know we'll know exactly yeah where we'll know is. exactly where it is now so of course we'll be careful but that's right but you did enjoy the trencher a lot i did and i had a um i guess i posted several videos but uh, and I in the new video that came out with us, I got you on there on the uh, trencher. On the trencher, so. Oh. But that's what we use to uh, dig those lines. Um, let's see here. Let's just start at the top now, since we got all the water lines out of the way, all about the water, and that is: Are we eventually going to take Moo Man's Mr. Moody's ear tags off? Um, what do you think? I think they need to come off. And don't put fly tags back in. Not right. Um, not necess- I think we'll use something different. Different. Than a fly tag. Okay. I mean, I'm not saying the fly tags don't work, and it may be that we do go back with the fly tag, but I think right now we'll just remove them. Okay. And just see what happens. I mean, obviously his ear tags are 
pretty old from the look of the color. Right. So they're not doing any good right now. They are not. Um, so let's remove them. We start having an issue, then we do and something come to different. find out they have a tool that removes those. Is that right? Yes. And we had a viewer tell me that they are sending us one. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Well, then I'm glad we haven't removed it because we've been trying to figure out, you know, we could do it with wire cutters and and do it safely, but I I would love to have a tool yes. since they make one. They, they, they said they make a tool for it, so I guess we shall see. We will get those out as mm-hmm. soon as we get that tool, um, but we probably will open it on the podcast. It so. probably will, and uh, yeah, that's probably what we'll do. We'll... um. I mean, that'll probably be fairly quick because we're starting. <laughs> yeah, we went yesterday packages. as a family. Yes. We thought we were going to go over to a farm supply store, and we got over there, and they were closed. It was Black Friday. We, did, we didn't anticipate they would be closed, right. but they were. So we stopped at the post office as a family in the truck, mm-hmm. and the truck is a regular cab, but That's it does right. have a tonneau cover on the back. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Because Jason was like, do you need me to go in and help you? And I said, no, just you and me, Carl, can sit out in the truck. I'll go get them. And I come back with two armfuls and I'm balancing. You yeah. Know? But, um, yeah, it, it's going to be sooner than later probably. Sooner than later. We were, we were thinking probably once a month on this, but it may be every other week on it the may gift be. opening. That's okay. Yeah. That's, That's okay. fine. Yeah, I've, we, been, I've thoroughly enjoyed everything so we've So much enjoyed it. And it just... I, I'm about warms to, my heart and just makes me smile at all the people that have enjoyed that video, and we love making you know, I, people smile. I really happy. didn't think people were going to enjoy it. I didn't either. Opening, I really didn't. opening gifts, but you know, um, we really do appreciate everything we get. It's not any kind of an act. It's not, you know. So I guess people see that and they they really appreciate that we appreciate. I guess so. I mean, I just just. The gifts, the gifts, you know, of course we appreciate and, and does bring smiles to our face, but the fact that we're bringing smiles to that's people's right. faces, and that's what we do this for. This that's is the right. whole, the podcast and the, and the videos. For enjoyment. Are for enjoyment and entertainment and just let this be a, an escape for, for people and put smiles on their faces and possibly maybe learn something every now and then, but mainly is, is that we want to make people happy. That's right. Yep. That's our that's our goal that is, is our to goal. put a smile on somebody's face. And if we do that, then we've accomplished our goal. That's right. Um, I was just about to say that we're about to have to start cleaning out the barn because um, we, when we moved, we just put all of our stuff in there. And it's really just all just out of order. Um, we don't have any power in the barn still, however... That's coming soon. That's coming soon. That's coming soon. Yes. So I would like to get the generator over there for now mm-hmm. and maybe get some order okay. to the barn and okay. put things, you know, just kind of where we know where they are versus being, oh, I need a chicken water, but I'm not quite sure where it is. Right. You know, just, yeah. just an orderly fashion. And I think we can store some of our podcast gifts that we will use at a later date in the barn. I agree. And so that that means we need to do it sooner than later. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gracious! The uh, I don't know. It's not that I'm dreading it. It's just um, I'm looking forward to it. I wish we just. I mean, you're right. But with the generator, we'll be fine. Yeah, I just we'll wish be fine. we had power. But it's coming. Well, um, your dad sent some guys the other day, and we thought they were coming to pick up a piece of equipment they had yes. brought. And he says, uh, Jason says, "What? What's up, Theo? What you doing?" He said, "Well, your daddy sent me over here to wire the barn." And we were like, what? And you know what I thought? What? I thought, because we got a temporary pole set up by the house site now. And then we got, my dad dug a trench from that pole to the barn so we can get power to the barn. Mm-hmm. And when he, when he said he was going to wire the barn, I thought they installed that wire from the pole to the barn. I just thought they laid that direct barrel wire uh-huh. in the ground. Uh-huh. And that's what they did. Well, but that's not what they did. No, Mary Carl and I had to go in. Um, she had a, a chicken that had a little sneeze. And so we went in the barn to get the Vet RX, mm-hmm. which is the natural stuff that you right. rub on their waddles and whatever. Uh-huh. To It's kind of like Vic Sab for right. chickens. And so when we opened the door, I was like, what? I mean, there were plugs and wires in the barn. They, he actually wired it up for lights and plugs. So I was just amazed to know yes. we weren't there that day. I don't even know where we went, but oh, that was the day we went and um, 
and got the appliances oh, and that's right. met with the cabinet maker. That's right. So, um, surprise to us, they wired the barn while we were gone. Yeah, that's yeah. I was shocked when he I, when he said they were going to wire the barn. I thought that's what they did. did you well, see? it's not that you can't do the wiring part of it. Time is not on our side. Right. We have so many things going that we need to get finished b- before the house build starts. Yeah, and that was one of them. Yeah, that was a, that was a big step. That was big. I mean, because they 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 are electricians. They do that every day. They do so. it all the time. It didn't take them no time to um, do it. So where are we? Uh, the uh, peacocks. Oh, the pigs. The pigs. The pigs. The pigs that are uh, turning over the um, garden. The garden area, uh, and they were in the latest video. But yeah, they're there. We still got them. They're growing like a weed. They're on new ground, and they are they they're still here. So yeah, um, I just hadn't been. I mean, we we feed them every day, but it's away from everything else. And they got an automatic feeder, and you only have to fill that up about I don't know every third or fourth day. They got a huge automatic water that has to be filled up maybe once a week. Well, I think what so, happened I mean, was when you were here before Mary Carl and I moved in, you and Arlo were staying here, and you would show little shorts of you and Arlo going out to feed the pigs. And that was the only other animal here that we had that to tend was it. to. Yeah. And so that was that was really the the, the prime reason for yeah. going out to feed was right. just for the pigs. And so you took the audience along with them, and everybody's questioning, are they still here? Well, they're, they are still here. Yes, they are still here. They are still here. And maybe we'll start showing them a little bit more. Uh, when are we going to let the peacocks out? And you, we kind of explained this in the last video, but I wanted to make sure people understood what was going on. And that is that we're going to move our chicken bus <laughs> that we're going to call it. Y'all know the big yellow chicken coop that we built. It's got the wheels on it. We left the wheels on it. All for this purpose is to move it around our pasture. And uh, we got a huge, much bigger pasture area on the other side of our property, and that's where we tend, we're thinking about putting them. That's right. We ordered um, the electrified netting that'll go mm-hmm. around the whole entire perimeter of the chicken bus, and we will let them free range. There will be some scragglers that get across the fence, but they'll make their way back at night, and then... Every evening we'll go and we'll make sure everybody's inside. We'll gather eggs. We'll shut that door. And when we move those chickens, the turkeys will go as well. Yes, the turkeys and chickens are all going to go into the chicken bus. To free range. To free range. On fresh grass. Yep. And we're going to let the peacocks out in the area that you see where everybody is now. Where the peacocks are now, but they're going to be in that area. and, And we're hoping that they stick around. Yeah, they may not stay in that um, enclosed fence area, but I think that they will realize that that is their home, and that's where they'll go back to roost every evening. Mm -hmm. We'll just leave their enclosure there so they can go up at night. And um, I don't know if if y'all have been following us for a while. You know that Thomas and Scott do not get along. No. And so, therefore, we're not letting the peacocks out until the chickens and turkeys go on the pasture. And we didn't let the peacocks out either because we want them to learn this is their home because they're extremely territorial. That's right. And if we would have done it too soon, they would have tried to fly back. Anytime you add any kind of um, peafowl to your farm and it's of age that it can fly, then it needs to be contained because they're going to go, they're going to attempt to go back to their um, prior living environment. Mm Mm-hmm. That's and, just what that's what they do. They're they're territorial. Did not and, want that to happen. And no, I think it's it been long happen. enough. I think so a, too. A matter of fact, if if we were ready to put the birds out on pasture, we would do it now. But we're not quite ready to take the getting bus. Getting really close to you getting the bus out. That's right. The yeah. bus is getting close. So I'm thinking in the next few weeks we'll have that bus on the road. I agree. Well, not on the road, on the pasture. <laughs> I'm not, not taking road. it on the road. Not taking it on the road. Not yet, anyway. Not yet. Uh, does Nugget ever sleep in his shelter? Uh, no. I, I've never seen him sleep. As a matter of fact, he hardly even goes in that shelter. Um, it's just, maybe when it rains, I'll go out here and look, maybe, and see. Uh, really, the only thing that really gets in there from time to time are the Muscovy ducks. Mm-hmm. And they get in it for the shade. the shade. Yeah. yeah. So, there's, there's no... 
really particular reason. Uh, I, I just Nugget never did it at the other place. I guess that's their nature, uh, where they live in Australia. Yeah. Um, they're just used to or, you know, doesn't bother. He had the ability to get up under the porch area, mm-hmm. which was his shelter at the other farm. And so, um, therefore, we did buy the shelter for Nugget. We did buy to- it strictly for Nugget. But that's just because um, we want him to have the ability to get under it if he chooses. And if he doesn't choose, we can't make him. Right. But I've never seen him. No, never I've seen never him. seen him out under the shelter never. either. Never. I mean, he walks through it, but he <laughs> doesn't stop. Through it, but yeah, he doesn't stop or lay down in it. Never. What is your new address? Yeah, this is being asked a lot. Um, it's in all our videos, but I think a lot of people can't see it. Um, or they watch this on TV and you definitely can't see it. But our new address is... Well, grab your pen, grab, grab your, your pen. paper, um, give them a second, maybe go on to the next question, and then we'll say what the new address is. Okay, that'll work. Um, the next question is... Move your hand, I'm please. sorry. Will you be planting any trees other than fruit, fruit trees? Uh, yes, we are going to plant trees. we we got plans to plant a lot of trees, to be honest with you. We do. We're we're ready to plant them. We just have been waiting on the water lines to get installed. Mm-hmm. Um, although you know this time of the year is the best time to plant trees. It is to get them you it know is. rooted and and adapted before summertime and dry right. weather hits. We wanted to have our water lines in so we could give them you know a big dose of of water and fertilizer once we get them in the ground and to give them a good start because um, if we didn't have a way to water them, yeah. They wouldn't if make it. If they needed water, you know, we wouldn't have a way to get no water to them. But now we well, uh, definitely can get initially water Initially, when we plant them, we're for sure going to have to water That's them. That's true. Yeah, we're going to have to water them in So now good. we've got we a way to it. water and them. And you've reached out to a, a nursery that's yeah. got trees other than fruit trees. And so... I've actually gotten a list from him as to what he has. Mm-hmm. And he told me he would pull anything aside that we, that we are interested in. Um, we thought about going... Last week, I think it was, we gave Mary Carl the option to either go to the nursery or go to Birmingham. And it was a day that we we just wanted to have some family time, and she chose to go to Birmingham. So Yeah, and it was a day that was kind of dreary outside, and I oh, couldn't yeah, glue couldn't water pipe. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. So I bet out. next time we give her the option, she's probably going to choose nursery. Nursery, yep. But we, so. we do have some trees in mind that we want to plant. All right, so what is our address? If you have your pen and paper ready... <laughs> It is P.O. Box 2782, Clanton, Alabama, 35046. And Clanton is C-L-A-N-T-O-N. Yes. Clanton, Alabama. And so right. that is our new address. Um, I was about to read the same question. Question again. Is Will you do to... uh, open and right before Christmas, mail time? Mail time. Uh, you know what? I was... It's just so random because we're doing yeah. it when we don't have space. And we haven't, I haven't even planned that far ahead, even though Christmas is really close. <laughs> but that would be a great mail time. It would. We could all have Santa hats on. And... I think we will try to time that where we can make that happen. We will. We yes. will do everything in our power to have storage enough to, yes. <laughs> to keep gifts. And we probably will do one before Christmas, too. We'll do one before Christmas. If not, it may be like three-hour long mail time. Uh, you know, so, yeah. yeah. Might lose somebody's attention. And we're, and we're trying to work all this out. Uh, we're getting feedback from you guys. Um, you know, you, it, it took too long to open the packages one, so we kind of pre-opened them this other one. And so... The shadows. Uh, the shadows. The camera's not close enough. The camera's not far away. I can't hear you. You're too loud. So we're just trying to figure it all out and do our best with that mail time. So just bear with us until we get all the kinks worked out of it. Yeah, and the, the shadow situation, we've had a lot of sunny days here lately. It's yes. only um it's it's only been cloudy probably that one day that, that we did some day. mail time. And what happened on that day was as we started and it got darker a lot faster than we anticipated. Well, we had some technical <laughs> difficulties, too, That's with true, your yeah. microphone. My so. microphone wasn't working right, so, yeah. Do 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 you not have any brothers or sisters? Uh, I have an older brother. And I am an only child. And you're an only child, so. So, we don't we don't have a big family. No. Nope. We just, um, just kind of one sibling. One sibling. What, what did, on mail time... Your mom got a 
coffee cup, uh-huh. a coffee mug. Uh-huh. And this person wanted to know, what did Nana's mug say? And Mary Cross said, if I remember correctly, it said, like, world's greatest Nana or world's greatest grandma on it. Okay. Yep. Okay. So that's what her said on it. I was wondering oh, about the Amazon wish list. Oh, uh, I haven't, I tinkered around with it a little bit. To be honest with you guys, I haven't had time. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but I really haven't. But I will try to get an animal wish list for things, you know, for the animals and that kind of thing. And uh, and when we do get it, we will definitely post it. And I'll try my best to get that worked out this week. Might be a rainy day. I think there's yeah. seven straight days of sun, sun. ahead. We'll Which figure it out. We're not complaining. No, about. not at all. <laughs> not at all. How is Nugget adjusting to Moody? I tell you what, Nugget acts like he is so alarmed with anything new. Yeah. But he did not do that with Moody. You know, he did not do that at all with Moody, which was I don't know why. You know, you would have thought he would have done his little burping business. Yeah, that's you know, what he does now. He does. He sounds like he's burping. <laughs> he um, does. I don't get it on camera because he's never... Well, it's not on time. <laughs> well, he does it when something's new or startles him or he's being semi-defensive or letting something know, hey, I'm here. He stretches So he his doesn't do that long. with us because, you know, he's so used to us. So it's hard to catch that on camera, but it, it, it sounds like a burp. He goes, burp. Yep, it burp. does. It, um, it just, it amazes me that he did not like, he did not act like Moody was an intruder. No, not at all. He acted like Moody was supposed to be here and had been here all along and just, hey, buddy, welcome and, aboard. And maybe you would think maybe it's because Moody was is so big, but, you know, they say animals really can't distinguish size. So he, I don't know. I don't, I don't know because, um, you know, we have to be careful. Any kind of duck or goose that we put in there that's new, yeah. we have to be careful have because be careful. he's going to show his... Well, I don't know if he's showing dominance or if he's going to show that, hey, you're new here. You're in my territory. And I need to check yeah. you out real good. You're in my territory. Never has he done that with Moody. Never. And Joe and Moody are, they're buddies. They're pretty tight. They love to play fight. And I think a lot of it has to do is because we have some Nubians in heat. And Joe's a Nubian buck, goat. And so Joe's hormones is kind of cranked up and... He 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 tries to play fight with uh, Moody, and this I know you morning say that. was I think hilarious. It's, I think it's more of a of a want to play thing. Maybe so. Maybe it was, but I can hear I can hear Joe do that. Uh huh. <laughs> it's funny because Joe will stand back on his hind legs, just as high as he can go, and come down. And Moody just puts his old head. Yeah, down. Yeah, just puts his head down. And he's just <laughs> like, "Hey, buddy, I could send you to the moon if I wanted to, but I'm gonna let you slide." This morning, I heard just all kind of her moody mooing, and I heard Joe, and I looked over there, and Joe had taken off running, and Moody skips. And <laughs> Moody was skipping behind him, you know, and then Joe stopped and then raised up real big, and then Moody lets that old head down, <laughs> and it was, um yeah, they were they were, they were were going at hard today. It's funny. Very it's hard funny. today. That's when you hollered at me. And I was told hollering me to at you trying to look at them, yeah. I had the water going, and I couldn't hear real good, but. I did catch a glimpse of it. It's quite hysterical when they do so start funny. going at it. Uh, let's see here. Would it ever be possible to have a 24-hour camera going on the pastures? Uh, yeah, that. but that would be later on in the future. Uh, our internet is so much better here, and I get pretty good internet in the pastures. So, yeah, that's that's very, very possible to have a camera going. Um, and probably wouldn't do it every single day. To possibly do it maybe once a month or something like that. Have a I'm grinning because thing. the other day Mary Carl came in the camper and uh-huh. I was in the camper and she said, Mama, you gotta see this. I said, What is it? She said, I put my um tablet on time lapse and yes. I set it down in the pigeon coop. And I said, Okay. And she showed me what she saw and it, she was so giddy because she got to see a part of the pigeons that she had never seen before, which was, you know, not them just sitting still being right. cautious. They were in natural habitat, and they were walking around on the ground, and she saw her Victorian crowns, you know, get down and preen each other. Mm -hmm. And um, So, yes, that is something that she wants to do for sure. And she actually posted that video on her Instagram. Oh, did she? I didn't know that. 
She did. She posted it on her Instagram. So if you haven't been by there, check it out. MC Cockhill Farm on Instagram. And she's got that video. And she's got a video of the Victorians preening each other, too. Yes. Those Victorians are amazing birds. They're they beautiful. Are, they are beautiful. Beautiful, and beautiful, beautiful. She loves to go out there and spend time with them. And there were several people that commented that pigeon feces has a bacteria in it. And it's, I believe it's toxoplasmosis, if I'm not mistaken but she has a mask that she yes. hangs on the coop right on the outside in a secure location and she grabs that mask before she goes in yep. and she wears her mask every time she goes in there so no worries on mary carl getting the pigeon the lung disease right. i know that it's it's real and it's um i mean it's it's not anything made up it's just something that's in the pigeon feces and it has a tendency to affect humans and we don't want any kind of lung disease right. so she's taking all the Necessary precautions. Which type of four health, health dog food do you buy? And I didn't know the answer to this. So okay. I would have wrote it in there, but I just didn't know. I'm the dog food buyer. You're the dog food buyer. And we have little dogs as well as big dogs. Well, the little dogs can't consume big bites. And right. so I buy, buy the um, four health that's called Small Bites Adult. And it's in a blue and off-white looking bag. Mm -hmm. And it is Small Bites. And that's because everybody can eat it. Um, yes. Little dogs can't eat those big, huge chunks. So Small Bites for everybody. And it's just, um, it only comes in one flavor. I, I, I think it's lamb and rice, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but that Small Bite only comes in one flavor. Okay. Small Bite for Health Dog Food. Mary Carl is... Go ahead. She suggested before, Mama, we ought to try the sweet potato and something else. I guess she's thinking she likes sweet potato, so the, the dogs, dogs might would. too. Yeah. I said, baby, I said, um, we can't, you know, swap flavors because the small bites is only in, in the lamb one. and rice. I got Chicken you. and rice, whatever it is. You know, there was a ton of positive feedback about that yes, dog food. I read too. nothing negative. That so many people used it and their vet had recommended it. And it just, I've just, been very pleased with it. I mean, yeah. just... Um, it definitely they consume a lot less of it. Yeah, they do because consume it doesn't a lot less have those fillers. Right. You know, it's right. more of the things they need versus just trying to fill a hole. Mm -hmm. Are you going to do concrete countertops? Uh, maybe. Don't I mean we we like concrete countertops and we have and we get wishy washy, y'all. We we like one thing, we go back and but the concrete countertops we do like and we've talked about. Yes, I had um, in the original Cog Hill, of course, we were on a budget. We're doing it yourself. So we did tile countertops yes. because I could do it myself. Jason and I could both, you know, help each other and, and do those countertops and it'd be a lot less expensive than doing granite right. or quartz or whatever at the time. 17 years ago was in, in style. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have the financial means to do that. So we went with tile and... We did the little four-inch squares, and it had a grout line all the way around it. And, y'all, I'm telling you what, I spent more time trying to clean those countertops. It was a terrible decision. It was a terrible <laughs> decision, especially for the cook. Yeah. Um, we it, sealed it, it, them properly. sealed them, but it still would get, and, you know, I had somebody tell me before we build, say, you're going to regret putting them tile countertops in. And this guy knew what he was talking about because he, was, he wasn't a construction person, but he was a could be he was a perfectionist built all kinds of stuff big it diy Bob it was oh. and just i remember him telling me that you know you're going to regret putting those countertops in well, we really didn't right. have any option at the time you know we were on yeah. a budget we were trying to do something we could do ourselves, and lo and behold it was a terrible decision and not to say if you have tile countertops and love them it may be for you but it wasn't for us because it was not for us they just stayed nasty that grout just that grout line in the middle stay and i guess if you had a dark one it wouldn't be that bad yeah mine was white yeah, or <laughs> that's off white not mm -hmm. very smart was it was not we smart. um we ended up installing a little coffee bar area because we didn't have a whole lot of countertop space and on the coffee bar area we did butcher block mm -hmm. which i felt was much easier to maintain than the tile was yeah and it wasn't even sealed it was unsealed butcher block we would just seal it with uh mineral oil yeah from time and to clean time. it with vinegar mm -hmm. so um <laughs> I will tell you, we won't have tile countertops. No. Um, either concrete or I really like 
Um, marble, I really like, but I just know I, we're not probably that'd be probably blow our budget out the water. I would like something on the island, which is the place that we'll probably do much of our prep and yeah. maybe even eat there. I would like that to be a solid surface that we could clean easily. Right. And as far as the countertops, you know, I anything but tile. Anything but tile, yeah. I, I mean, like butcher the, block I'm even good with. I yeah. just just don't want something with a grout line. I like the white with the gray marbling veins. in it, veins in it, and it looks like marble. It's just what I like. I just love that look. I don't, it's just what I like, especially white cabinets. They're just super clean. Um, I just love that look. That's kind of what we, you know, we ended up coming back several years ago and replacing our tile countertops with um, a solid surface. We did. We um, And it looked like marble. What happened was we had flipped a, the house next door to us, and so I had went with a solid surface. I'd used quartz in mm-hmm. the house next door, and at the time, it had gone down in price a lot. Yeah. And the plus that the kitchen was not very big, so putting those solid surface countertops in that small kitchen space just made it so beautiful and was not very costly because it wasn't a lot of space. And I loved it so much that we ended up saving some of our profit that we made on flipping that house and putting the countertops in our old cog hill. Mm-hmm. And it looked really good. And I loved them. They were so easy to clean. So easy to clean. And we had to um, bust up all that tile. And <laughs> you remember that? Oh, yes. I do remember that. We had to get up all the all old the tile countertops before the solid surface ones could be installed. It was a nightmare. It was. That was a mess. That Ooh. was even the second reason we wish we hadn't put the tile in <laughs> for de- destroying it. <laughs> <sighs> Uh, let's see here. Well, Jason, what type of music do you listen to? I like everything, pretty much. Um, I really do. I really like, I can listen to classical music. I can listen to jazz. I can listen to, of course, you know, I like to dance. So, you know, I can even listen to hip hop music, country music, contemporary, everything. But what I really like the most of is kind of like coffee house type music. Um, Jack Johnson. Jack Johnson, Nora Jones. I like jazz. I like Miles Davis. Um, so that kind of stuff, you know, between coffee house and folk music is kind of what I listen to the most of now. Jason's a music person. I'm not. I'm you just are, a, yeah. Whatever zone's fine with me. I'm I just... have ear, ear, ear pods and just I, I listen to music a lot when I can. I, I really have do. I have zero. I have no headphones. Yep. I have no ear pods. I have no care and music. I can work outside all day long and never think about music. And Jason's like that. We gotta go get the radio before we can get started yep. on this coop. I just I love music and even when I grill outside, the campers got outdoor speakers. Oh yeah, it. I mean they're they're <laughs> on, and it doesn't bother me. I'm not. I don't mean that. Right. It's just not something that I feel like I need. Yeah. Yep, I just love it. I mean, I just it's a I don't know it sets the mood for me. Uh, I don't know. I just I just love. Music. We're opposite in that direction. If that. if I didn't record videos, like you know, if we didn't do this all the time, you know, I would have the ear pods in while I fed them in the mornings and everything. Oh, I, I thought just, you were going to say you would have been a musician. No, not a musician. <laughs> no, I just love listening to it. Where did we get peaches? There has to be a story there. Uh, peaches. And this probably could be a podcast in itself, I guess. I don't know. Um, Peaches was kind of a gift. Gift to us. Peaches was an unplanned gift. was an unplanned gift. Um, Out of all the people that usually, you know, I'm the one that's always... Hesitant. Hesitant to getting things and always try to put reason in everything. Okay, we don't need this animal, blah, 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 blah. That's me. But... For some reason, I wanted peaches, and I don't, and I still, y'all, I, I, I get nervous and anxious, and I'll have to ask myself five million questions when it comes to introducing a new animal, and it's everything. Even with my best buddy Arlo, I did it with him. Well, I will say that the, the night that I told you about Moody, your eyes told oh, the true gosh, story. Yes. When I told you that, you know, I had a friend that mm-hmm. that said that, the family might be willing to rehome him, and would we be interested? And I came to ask you, your face was just like, Brooke, you have got to be kidding me. That's me. And and I knew that, but I also knew that 
I can't go get a cow and bring it here without talking to you first. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, I Chick- chicken's the other thing. Huh? But a cow. Oh, yeah. Living. Chicken's yeah. another yeah. thing. Yeah. Another story. Even a duck or a goose or something we already have. But, you know, a, a dog or a, a goat or a cow, that's a major decision for us. Yeah. And it's something that Jason is very hesitant about is bringing in something new. Yes. And I understand it for the most part, but he takes it a little far. <laughs> I do. I really do, y'all. Um, you, you And you don't, y'all probably think that's crazy. Yeah, we got all these animals, blah, blah, blah. But I'm the one that's always so hesitant and I question. every Even even you wanting to breed the goats. Yes. And I'm like, oh, do we? And so, that's just yes. me. Um, that's just me. Mary Carl told me, <laughs> she said, Mama, she said, <laughs> Let, let's just me and you just go on and put Joe <laughs> in with the girls because Daddy's never going to tell us that we can do it, and <laughs> and he she's right. And but I respect him for that because for the most part, you know, bringing an animal into a house, a home, a facility, whatever, is pretty much a lifelong decision. At least for the animal, it is right. the animal that's going to live here. We're not going to part with the animal, right? So it needs to be a well thought out. We can't go buy an alpaca without a place to put an alpaca. Um, right. And, unless it's a certain situation, you know. Yeah, well, the Moody situation. Moody situation was a certain you know, situation. He, he was, was getting out of his fence. And there's a possibility where he could he could get, get hit hurt. by a car or, or whatever. And It was either you get him or you don't. You don't. And we actually had, you know, pasture area to put him. Now, if we wouldn't have had any fence or anything. Oh, if up, we had been at Cog Hill, it would have been a no. No. It would have yeah. been a no from me. I wouldn't have, have even no. thought about yep. it. Matter of fact, we had somebody stop by, and they were relocating, and they had a, a pot belly pig, and want to know, do we want it? Mm-hmm. And and I was like, you know, we just we just can't. We we can't. We've already tried another pig with peaches. Well, you have peaches to think about it. Absolutely, could not stand Marshall, the other pig we had. She could not stand him, y'all, and it put so much stress on her. And so I was like, you know, we just no, and so. No, and I and I like I said, I commend you for making that decision because even though we do have space for another pig, to offer another pig a home and for Peaches to not get along with it, it's just not a good situation. Yeah, you it's know? not. So um, that being said, <laughs> where did we get Peaches? Uh, peaches came from our friends that we knew, Dave and Julie, and she had gotten. Like three, didn't she? You know, did she have a? She didn't have a pig that had babies. No, uh, it was a. It was a. She was Peaches was a full blooded Vietnamese, Vietnamese pot belly pig. Pot-belly but why pig. did she get three of them? You know, she is. She's like. <laughs> she's like you and her are on the same wavelength, girl. <laughs> you know. But she had three, and two were black, and one was spotted. And I said how much I liked her, and I and I remember being at uh, Julie's house and just loving on Peaches was like this pig, y'all. Yeah, she was. And I was bottle feeding her. And you know it was, and she and, and she would. Julie was always so giving. Oh and my still gracious! Is. She would give us the shirt yeah. off of her back, and she was like, "Do you want her?" And I was like, "We didn't ask no, for her. No, I don't want you know me." He said, "No, I don't want her." And then the next day, she was like, "You know, take her, y'all, y'all, y'all take come her back and see, me. y'all come back and see the little pig." So we did, and of course, it was the same thing over and over again. You know, every time we went over, it was just more loving on. What turned out to be peaches, peaches. Mm-hmm. and um, and we took her home. We did a little video thing. I like, think we were scared of what our dogs were going to act like. Hand. Um, you know, she lived in our backyard, and I've, I've had friends before that had pot billy pigs, and you know, they 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 said they weren't personable and they rooted and this that, and I was like, we really don't want that at our place, but. Peaches don't do that at all. No, she lived in the house for a long time. She I had did you live in the house for a long time? I think I only had one Yorkie at the time, Millie. Remember? I think so. And um, Peaches lived in the backyard, and she would come in and out. I built a ramp for her; she could get on the deck. He built a ramp for her. Um, eventually, she just she just started walking a lot, and our yeah. backyard was a hilly area. And as she got bigger, it was hard for her to maneuver. On it a was. hillside. And she got where she, she'd rather be outside than inside. Yeah, she she wasn't going inside anymore. Yep. Um, I don't know if it was the fact that she had to go up the ramp to get in the house or if she just decided she didn't want to be inside pig I anymore. I think she just decided she didn't want to be inside anymore. She just she just got where she'd go outside and stay outside all day. 
And then we would have to try to lure her inside. Yes, I can and remember then pig. She, you know, squealing. Squealing, y'all. Pigs, if you've never had a pig or been around a pig, if you do anything touching, li- like lifting her leg up to cut her hooves, you lifting that you. leg up, you would have th- thought we were branding her with a hot iron. I mean, she just they are goes dramatic. so dramatic. But that's their defense mechanism. You know, they don't, they don't, I guess they can bite. Peaches don't bite, but I can that's rem- what a pig does to, to to ward off anything. That's their first line of defense is that high squealing and it's loud. I can remember us um, when she still lived in the backyard. It was going to get down pretty cold that night. Mm-hmm. And we wanted her to come in. We were like, Peaches is going to be freezing tonight. So uh, we did everything we could to try to get her to come in the house. And she was not having she it. She was not. I'm talking about we y'all. We spent her front. an hour, two hours back there trying to get her to come inside. And so we got her a blanket. And, you know, it, we, did, we just did everything we could. She just decided she was not coming in the house anymore. And that was it. That was it. And that was when Peaches started staying in the carport. But you know what? What's that? She won't have to have a ramp in our new house so she can come on in. She can if she wants to. She, she can, can come, come on walk in. right on in. It won't be off the ground like it is at our at little cottage. That's right. We had stairs to go up, and that's why we built the ramp. But um, And we do plan to let Peaches out eventually once we get all of our construction right. done. If she wants to come out. If she out. wants to come out. You know, she's not biting at the bit at all means to come out. She no. just, she's content. She's so content over there. She enjoys it. The goats don't even bother her. She don't bother the goats. Um, I don't, it's just worked out so great. I never would have thought that it would have been like that. I was all. really worried because she was so used to having her carport and, you know, laying on her cot. And we put the cot in there mm-hmm. and she would not lay on the cot. She laid on the ground. Yep. And I think it's because... It was grass, and she had concrete under the carport. You're probably right. You're probably right. So we removed the cot and put hay down, and she sleeps on that hay every night. Yep. You'll see her late in the afternoon adjusting her bed. Well, her bed made out of hay. Mm Mm-hmm. But if she wants to, when we get our house built, we'll let her out. She can come up to the house. She can be a carport pig again if if she she wants wants to. That's right. She absolutely can. Come on in the garage. That's right. She can come on in the house. That's right. She could. She could. I mean, we don't have a problem with that. It's just the fact that she seems so content. She does seem content. Really content. Everybody does. Everybody seems so good Well, at the, at the, at the new form. I mean, just, yeah, everybody. Everybody. As we um, feed in the mornings, I realize how much better our layout is now, even though it may not be as eye-appealing as it was at the Little Cog because we had so much character. We had all the little buildings. We had this, that, and the other. But it was it was a job to feed everybody. It was, it was not efficient, trust me. It was not efficient. That's the answer <laughs> I'm looking for. It was not efficient. So when we do feed, all. feed the crew, mm-hmm. it is so wonderful to have everything lined up. And yes. like I said, the visual may not be as pretty right now as it right. was what you saw at the Little Cog, but... We're working every day to yep. to make it more appealing, and you know um, we do plan to plant trees. We want the chicken area to have some shade, mm-hmm. and it's not going to happen overnight. It's not. I mean, it's like not. I said, the reason we haven't planted trees is simply because of a time factor and the fact that we haven't had water. Yep. So I mean, it's coming. It's just that we can't go out and buy trees when we're in the middle of installing water lines. I will say this: we have. I don't know how big that area is, acre wise. But it's way bigger than what we had, where the animals are now, that we had at the Little Cog. Mm-hmm. More spread out. Mm-hmm. But it takes us half the time, and got, even got more animals. I feel like I've done a, 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 well, I'll say it, crappy job, because we get finished so fast. So fast. It, I had a lot of people before, and I, I know you answered it, asked us, how long did it take us to do chores at the other place? It took a long time. It took us... At least an hour to an hour and a half to do the chores. I would say an hour and a half. It was so every day. It was so spread out at the other farm. That's the morning chores. We had to come back and do the evening chores, Mm -hmm. which didn't take near as long, but still took another 30, 45 minutes. That's right. So at least two hours to two plus hours a day at the old place versus now, y'all is so much faster. And when we do put the chickens out on pasture, we realize that we'll have to go to another place right. that's not all lined right. up. But it's still, it's it's not going to be 
Um, it's warm in here. Why'd that cut off? It gets certain temperature. It cuts oh, off. Okay. Mm-hmm. But it's still going to be um, much more efficient. We're, yeah. We plan to get a big 55 gallon drum for their water. So we can only fill that up one time versus taking waters over there right. every day. And, right. you know, we have the big feeder. So it won't be that much. It won't be that much. It'll just be, you know, we'll take the barrel in the tractor and fill it up with water and take it back. Right. And then just moving it once a week. So yep. Yep. it should be good. But I'm I'm just happy to see how efficient everything is. So don't don't be too down on us about it not looking as pretty as the old place because it's coming. It's coming. It it eventually will, and you guys will be a part of it. And there, at the old place, you didn't be you wasn't a part of any of it hardly because it was pretty much all done. That's right. There are times when I pull in and I see the bareness and no trees, and I think, oh, I want to plant trees today, but it's coming. It's coming. And that'll that'll make a lot of difference. It will, and then it's going to take a while for trees to get big. That's too, right. So it, They're not going to be grown trees when they get here. They'll no. take some time to, and that'll be the beauty of it. You'll get will. to see them grow and flourish with us. That's right. All right. <laughs> hey guys, thanks for listening to this episode of the Podcast Podcast. We'll catch you on the next one. Y'all be good. Well, it's another one in the books for the Cog Hill Forty. Join us again next week for our next edition of the Cock Hill Podcast. And be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.